there's an old nursery rhyme that each and every one of us knows. And it starts like this. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. But in only a matter of years, we might have to change the words to this very well-known verse. No longer will we be able to ask the star what you are. Instead, we'll be asking the question where you are. Because of this current moment, stars are disappearing at an alarming rate. Our night sky today is drastically different from the one we saw 10 years ago. The brilliancy of stars is slowly diminishing until their vibrant glow vanishes from sight. And with the current rate at which this takes place, there might not be any stars left in the city of Lincoln in the next decade. To clarify, I'm not here to talk to you about some newly discovered black hole or star-eating force that could potentially devour our sun and in turn wipe out all life on Earth. Thankfully. <laughs> While the physical stars that are light years away will continue to exist for a millennia, our ability to see them will more or less disappear. If we were to look out at the night sky tonight, here's what we'd most likely see. A sparse array of white dots. If you're lucky, the Big Dipper. But contrary to popular belief, the state of Nebraska isn't just entirely cornfields. If we were to drive 40 miles south to a rural area known as Sterling, Nebraska, here's what we'd be treated to instead. Now, both photos were taken with the same camera at the same time of the year and feature the same portion of the sky. Yet, the latter offers a clear view of the Milky Way, a spectacle that many people sadly don't even know is visible to the naked eye. In fact, according to the National Geographic, as of June of 2016, more than 80% of Americans can't see the Milky Way from their own backyard. This is because, ironically, the lights of our night sky are being actively snuffed out by lights of our own creation. Similar to air and water pollution, light pollution is the overabundance of anthropogenic or man-made light in our night environment. And it's the reason why our stars are fading from view. The excess light from cities leaks into our night sky and covers natural starlight with a dirty yellow haze. In exchange for modern urbanization, we sacrifice our ability to see the natural beauty of our night sky. Spectacles such as the planet Jupiter, the Orion constellation, and even the entirety of the nearby Andromeda galaxy will soon disappear. It's a tragedy because although these phenomena will continue to exist in our universe, they simply won't for our eyes. Here is a map of light pollution in the United States. It's like a weather map. Any colored region marks an area that is affected, or it's representing a diagram that depicts the most interesting places in the United States. <laughs> Notice how the Midwest is generally gray. <laughs> but that's what's ironic. The black and gray areas are largely unaffected, while blues and greens are mildly polluted, and yellow to red detail is where our problem is at its worst. Understandably, urban areas like the eastern half and the western coast of the United States experience the worst of the problem and prevent millions of people from seeing what our night sky has to offer. It's only a matter of time before light pollution covers the entirety of our map. Many people argue today that stars are a little more than just a mere decoration. But surprisingly, this couldn't be further from the truth. The absence of a truly dark sky has potentially dire consequences for humanity. Circadian rhythm, also known as our internal clock, operates on a 24-hour cycle that helps to regulate our sleep, hunger, and bodily functions. For many people, this means feeling tired at the right times and sleeping on a regular schedule. But as a high school student, it ensures I sleep sparsely and feel tired all the time. <laughs> In a 2016 comprehensive of artificial night sky brightness, a group of researchers led by Fabio Fauci discovered that the reflection of electric lights in our atmosphere is sufficient enough to cause disruption in our body's natural rhythm and can lead to issues such as poor sleep, mood disorders, and even certain cancers. After all, we all know that it's incredibly difficult to sleep with a blinding street light right outside of our window. But it's not just humans that have this circadian rhythm. 
Plants and animals also share this, and they depend on Earth's daily cycles of light and dark to survive. And the imbalance that light pollution creates preys on nocturnal wildlife by radically altering their nighttime environment. As night skies grow brighter, the darkness that many of these animals use to hide from predators quickly fades away. For example, baby sea turtles. They hatch at night and find their way to the ocean by detecting the reflected moonlight over the water. However, as cities crawl into their habitats, the artificial light they produce deters the hatchlings away from the ocean and instead draws them towards the land, where they may be endangered or eaten. These effects on animals could have potentially devastating outcomes for our ecosystems by jeopardizing the daily balance of day and night that many of these species rely on. Essentially, light pollution has situated itself at the top of the food chain. Today, many of the lights we use serve little to no function. Take this photo I took at 11 o'clock at night. I'm confident that this building has some function, but surely not one an hour before midnight. Few people in their right mind would be sacrificing their critical sleep just to admire this building. This useless, application, <laughs> this useless application of illumination simply allows for more light to leak into our night sky and overcome the natural brightness of our stars. Of course, certain street lamps are still needed, though. Currently, most cities employ a design known as the drop lens design, like the one shown in this image. This design is flawed because it allows for cities to leak above the horizontal and into the night sky. Additionally, it does nothing to answer our safety concerns because it's the roads that need to be visible, not our sky. The alternative is the flat lens design, like the one shown in this image. This design is much better because it traps light and stops it from leaking above the horizontal. Additionally, it could save on energy costs because the light would only be needed to illuminate the ground instead of unnecessarily leaking into the sky. The problem with this solution, however, is accessibility. I'm sure that not all of us are civil engineers. So another solution, one that's actually accessible, inspired me to examine the problems of light pollution firsthand. Photography. A couple of months ago, as I was browsing Instagram, like most teenagers do when they're bored, I stumbled upon a photograph by photographer Bob Freshi, one that featured a sky full of little white stars and a giant Milky Way hovering in the night sky. At first glance, it took my breath away. I, like many, didn't know that it was possible to see this many celestial objects in our night sky. The photo fueled me to try and photograph the stars, at least while they were still visible. However, after many unsuccessful nights, I finally discovered an article depicting the problem of light pollution and how the backyard of a house in the city is hardly the best place to properly see the stars. Eventually, though, I found the time to drive miles away from Lincoln and into far darker skies. Here are some of the photos I've gathered. Now, photography is evidence. It bears witness to what it captures and provides a platform for all of us to see the hidden beauty of our planet and the universe. It's a unique conservation method, one that's able to spark conversation and sell an engaging story in just a matter of seconds. Photos make people ponder. They challenge the viewer to dig deeper. Where was the photo taken? Or why was the photo taken? Photography has the ability to raise awareness. But I'm not saying that everyone should go out and buy an expensive camera, though. Photography is a passion of mine, one that I use to bridge the gap between the arts and the sciences. Light pollution is a multifaceted problem, and I believe that not only should everyone find something they're interested in, but also a way to connect that activity to something else, whether it be the environment or simply another hobby. Maybe you're really good at fictional writing, and you should use that talent to create stories that hint on issues such as climate change. We need to explore these connections, find ties amongst each other, and break down the polarizing boundaries that try to separate. In short, we have to map our own constellations. But instead of using stars, we have to link together our minds. Thank you. Mm -hmm.